Daf Yomi tractate by Metzia, page 84b, top of the page, with the words Vafilu Hachilo Samach. After this digression, the Gemara returns to the story of Rabbi Elazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon. And although his flesh did not putrefy, even so, Rabbi Elazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon, did, still did not rely on his own opinion as he was worried that he may have erred in one of his decisions. He accepted afflictions upon himself as atonement for his possible sins. At night, his attendants would spread out 60 felt bed coverings for him. In the morning, despite the bed coverings, they would remove 60 basins of blood and pus from underneath him. Ew. Okay. The following day, in other words, every morning, his wife would prepare for him 60 types of relish made from figs, and he would eat them and become healthy. His wife, concerned for his health, would not allow him to go to the study hall so that the rabbis would not push him beyond his limits. In the evening, he would say to his pains, My brothers and my friends, come. In the morning, he would say to them, Go away, due to the dereliction of Torah study that you caused me. One day, his wife heard him inviting his pains. She said to him, You are bringing the pains upon yourself. You have diminished the money of my father's home due to the cost of treating yourself imposed afflictions. She rebelled against him and went back to her father's house, and he was left with no one to care for him. Meanwhile, there were 60 sailors who came and entered to visit Rabbi Elazar. Son of Rabbi Shimon, they brought him 60 servants, each bearing 60 purses, and prepared 60 types of relish, and he ate them. When they had encountered trouble at sea, these sailors had prayed to be saved in the merit of Rabbi Elazar, son of Rabbi Shimon, upon returning to dry land, they presented him with these gifts. One day, the wife of Rabbi Elazar, son of Shimon, said to her daughter, one day the wife of Rabbi Elazar said to her daughter, Go and check on your father and see what he is doing now. The daughter came to her father who said to her, Go and tell your mother that ours is greater than theirs. In other words, my current financial status is greater than that of your father's household. He read the verse about himself. She is like the merchant. She brings her food from afar. Proverbs 31.14 as, as he was unhindered by his wife from going to the study hall, Rabbi Elazar, son of Rabbi Shimon, ate and drank and became healthy and went out to the study hall. The students brought 60 questionable samples of blood before him for inspection to determine whether or not they were menstrual blood. He deemed them all ritually pure thereby permitting the women to engage in intercourse with their husbands. The rabbis of the academy were, were murmuring about Rabbi Elazar, son of Rabbi Shimon, and saying, Can it enter your mind that there is not one uncertain sample among them? He must be mistaken. Rabbi Elazar, son of Rabbi Shimon, said to them, If the halakha is in accordance with my ruling... Let all the children born from these women be males, and if not, let there be one female among them. It turned out that all the children were males, and they were called Elazar in his name. It is taught in Abraita that Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi lamented and said concerning the wife of Rabbi Elazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon, how much procreation has this evil woman prevented from the Jewish people. She caused women not to have children by preventing her husband from going to the study hall and rendering his halachic rulings.
As Rabbi Elazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon, was dying, he said to his wife, I know that the rabbis are angry at me for arresting several thieves who are their relatives, and therefore they will not properly tend to my burial. When I die, lay me in my attic and do not be afraid of me. In other words, do not fear that anything will happen to my corpse. Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmani said, Rabbi Yonatan's mother told me that the wife of Rabbi Elazar, the son of Rabbi Shimon, told her, I laid him in the attic for no less than 18 years and no more than 22 years. His wife continued, When I would go up to the attic, I would check his hair, and when a hair would fall out from his head, blood would come and appear in its place. In other words, the corpse did not decompose. One day I saw a worm emerging from his ear, and I became very distressed that perhaps his corpse had begun to decompose. My husband entered to me in a dream and said to me, It is no matter for concern. Rather, this is the consequence for a sin of mine, as one day I heard a Torah scholar being insulted, and I did not protest as I should have. Therefore, I received this punishment in my ear, measure for measure. I think we'll do uh, part B. Next up.